In this video, we're going to discuss reaction order. Reaction order, we've already seen when we were writing out the rate laws for different reactions. The reaction order was referring to the exponent for each reactant. And that tells us a bit about what the reaction order is. It's essentially the relationship between the reaction rate and reactant concentration. And you can describe the reaction order for a particular reactant or for the overall reaction. So for example, let's take a look at this reaction. Rate equals k a to the power of 1 and b squared. So this would be the rate law that has been determined either through experimental data or from a mechanism. When we look at this reaction, we can look at the individual reactants and say for A, since it's through the power of 1, the reaction is first order with respect to A. Since the reaction has an exponent of 2 for B, then we can say that this reaction is second order with respect to B. And finally, we can consider the entire reaction as a whole. And the reaction order for this overall reaction would just be the sum of all the individual reaction orders. In this case, we have 1 and 2. So we can say that overall, this is a third order reaction. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about then is what does it mean if you have different reaction orders? If you have a zeroth order reaction, first order reaction, second order. And we'll go through those three over here and we're not gonna cover all of them. There's a lot of different possible reaction orders, but if you can understand how zeroth order, first order, and second order works, you will be able to figure out the other reaction orders. Also, these are the ones that generally show up on the M count. All right. So the first is a zero order reaction. A zero order reaction would mean that the exponent is zero and anything to the power of zero is just one. So you wouldn't even write the reactant concentrations in the rate law and the rate law would simply just be rate equals K, All right? And if you look at this equation, you will see that the reaction rate does not depend on reactant concentrations. And indeed, that's what a zeroth order reaction means. The reaction rate is independent of reaction concentrations. You might think, how is it possible for a reaction's rate to not depend on the concentration of reactants? Well, one example is if you have an, a reaction that is catalyzed by an enzyme. And in this case, enzymes are not a reactant. Uh, enzymes will increase the rate of the reaction by decreasing the activation energy. And in this case, you could be adding a small amount of enzymes such that the enzymes are saturated by reactants. If the enzymes are already saturated by the reactants, they're already catalyzing the reaction as fast as they possibly can. So if you add even more reactants, it won't speed up the reaction because the enzymes are already saturated. So that's one example of a reaction where the reaction rate does not depend on reactant concentrations. Now, another thing that's important for the MCAT is be able to determine the units of the rate constant for the different orders of reactions. And interestingly enough, even though this is called the rate constant, the units for the rate constant is different for each type of reaction. So if we take a look at this, we know that rate needs to have units of molar per second. All right, the rate at which you produce product per unit time, molar per second. So in this case, since there's no other term, that means K is going to have the same exact units of molar per second. All right, so now let's take a look at a first order reaction. So a first order reaction would just have one reactant, and it would be to the power of one. In this case, we say that the reaction rate depends linearly on the concentration of only one reactant. 
It's important that we say linearly because that implies that there's a direct relationship between the two. If you were to double the concentration of A, you double the reaction rate. If you triple the concentration of A, you triple the reaction rate. They change by the same amount, so it's a linear relationship. Now, a lot of reactions are first order reactions. So one notable example that you want to be familiar from MCAT are SN1 reactions. Right? SN1 reactions is a good example of first order reaction where the reaction rate only depends on the concentration of the electrophile. Now, here again we can talk about the units. So rate we know has units of molar per second. We want the units for K, but since we also have A in its concentration, well A has concentration of molar. So when you cancel out the molar from both sides, then we see here for first order reactions that the rate constant has units of inverse seconds. So this is different from the zero order reactions, right? Over here it was molar per second. Here the units from the rate constant are one over seconds. All right, so then we can take a look at second order reactions. So second order reactions, the sum of the reaction orders has to equal two. There's two ways to achieve this. You can have a reaction where the rate is dependent on the square of the concentration of one reactant, or actually more commonly, you have a reaction whose rate depends on the product of two reacting concentrations. So both of these will give the same results. So you can have something like Ka squared, or you can have something like rate equals K times the concentration of A and the concentration of B. Both of these will give us an overall reaction order of two. Now, a good example of something that's a second order reaction is an SN2 reaction. In an SN2 reaction, the reaction rate depends on both the concentration of the nucleophile and the electrophile. So here, again, we can consider the units. Reaction rate is always molar per second. We want to figure out what K is. And here, we have concentration squared. So that's molar squared. So when you divide by molar squared, you're going to see that the units for the rate constant is that it's actually 1 over molar second. So again, a different rate constant for second order reactions from first and zero. And you can essentially just continue this process for higher order reactions. But the idea is to understand that the reaction order describes how the rate of a reaction depends on reactant concentrations.